Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got that requested review that so many of you have asked me about, and that is Dex by Lloyd Barnes and Javier Fuenmayer. Before we get started, it's important that I explain to you that I have no disclosures. I paid for this with my own money. All of these other mainstream magic reviewers that you see here on YouTube, they were gifted this. Unfortunately, they're compromised. But here, I can objectively tell you what this is, what you can expect, try to answer your questions along the way so you know what you can expect if you buy this. Now, I tried to voice some of my concerns about this product on the Magic Cafe. I was immediately attacked. The whole thread got shut down by the Magic Cafe. It's still locked. It's probably because the Magic Company behind this is their sponsor. That's what I imagined. But those of you who know me know that I love card indexes. I've experimented with many over the years. I did put out a review on the Cheetah Index about a year ago that I recommended to people, and I still think it's a really good index. And so I'm gonna do a couple of comparisons along the way. So we're gonna just start out first with my impressions of this. Now, this item was way overhyped by its creator, Lloyd Barnes. Last year, he was overhyping this as the world's fastest pocket index. And don't take my word for it, just check this out. This is the one you've been asking about. This is the one that we've all been waiting for. For months, over a year, me and Javier have been working on the world's fastest and slimmest ball playing card index. And it even hides in your front pants pocket. I finally got the final prototype. And I'm about to show it to Kaylee for the very first time when she comes downstairs. This is the one. Again, he called this the world's fastest pocket index and the GOAT or the greatest of all time index. So you can expect that I was thinking that this is going to be something incredible and amazing. And I was very disappointed when I learned that this was only a 48 card index. That's right. It's only a 48 card index. So there's no place for the aces. And the creators of this project tell you that when you tell a spectator to think of any card, just tell them to think of any card, but don't think of an ace. So you're already limited in that way. And if you're expecting to use this with any card routines you already do, what are you gonna do? Take the aces out of your deck? So there's no really good solution for this because their idea of putting the aces in the front or the back of the index don't work. So you're gonna have to put them in the other pocket. So now you're using a two pocket index, really. So unfortunately, that this was very misleading because it's not a 52 card index, it's actually a 48 card index. And even more concerning than that is that this is very cheaply made. In less than a week of me just practicing with it, mine's already becoming unglued and falling apart. And here's just a very simple small picture to show you the back so you could see how it's coming apart. And I'm not even showing you pictures of the sides or really exposing the index, but I just wanted to give you an idea and don't take my word for it. People are messaging me, telling me about how theirs is coming apart. Um, people are talking about on a Facebook user group how theirs is coming apart. And the creators of this, their solution is to just take some rubber bands and put them around the bottom to try to hold it together. Unfortunately, that's not a good solution. And I didn't pay $75 to have to throw rubber bands around the bottom of an index. That's gonna affect how it works because this index works on the idea that you have it has to be flexible so that way you can riffle to the right suit. And that's why it's supposed to be together at the bottom. So if it's already falling apart after one week, imagine in three months, imagine in the summer when you have the summer heat because the glue is coming undone with just the heat of being in my pocket. What about with the heat from the summer, especially if you, what if you live in a really hot place? then this isn't gonna last at all. And you can already see that this is already being resold on Magic Forums and eBay. So people are already trying to get their money back from this. And unfortunately, it's a very poor design. And in terms of speed, it's actually really slow. When I compare it to like the Cheetah, it's a lot slower than the Cheetah because when you go in your pocket, you have to first find your mark and then you have to count up or down to get to the value. So there is counting. And once you get to the value, you may have to riffle to get to the suit. So there's a lot of things going on, which is why you're gonna notice that these guys primarily start with their hand in their pocket. And we're gonna get to that shortly. But overall, 
this thing is not easy to use. It's not going to be easy to learn and it's really slow. When I compare it to the speed of the Cheetah, it's so slow compared to the Cheetah because when you use a Cheetah, in your mind, you already know where that value is. All you have to do is get the suit. So when they name the value, you already know where your hand's going. You just have to get to the suit, so to speak. So this is really inferior to Cheetah in terms of ease of use and finding the right card, you know, finding the right spot. Definitely the Cheetah just beats it outright. And this thing looks like a huge brick in your pocket. No matter what they tell you, you put it in your pocket, you're gonna be like, wow, that thing is huge in your pocket. So it really does look like a huge brick. So overall, I would say that this thing feels more like a toy than a professional tool. When you have this in your pocket and somebody names a card, you need to be sure that you're getting the right card. You don't want to be using something where you're not sure that you're going to get the right card. And the problem is, is that with this, you're not going to know if you really have the right card. And don't take my word for it. Let's watch the creator so you can see how he has a hard time with it. Three of hearts or a different card? Three of hearts, yeah. Enough. Okay, someone time this at home. You guys. Just cut me down. Okay, I three, do. two. Also, just to state, I normally start holding the decks in position on the tabs like yeah, teach. Yeah. So we're actually adding a bit of time because before I find the card, I'm getting into position and then it's exactly. time to sort through. And I haven't reset it. Okay, you ready? Ready. Hearts, let's go. Watch us both get this one wrong. Why would we get it wrong? <laughs> you got it? I got it wrong. Oh! I knew I had it I wrong. <laughs> but I pulled the king you out predicted. there. You predicted well, it. Well, you... I pulled the king out, I dragged a bunch of cards uh. with it. <laughs> so you could see there that Lloyd Barnes totally missed and I even questioned why didn't Lloyd Barnes put out any actual live performances of his own because last year he was performing for his wife in his basement. Why wasn't he part of the live performances with Javier? You know, these are just questions that I put out there for you guys to think about. You could see why this index is inferior to almost any other index out there. I think it's maybe superior to like Daniel Madison's The Advocate because there you had to riffle through a lot of cards to get to theirs. Here, you don't have to do that, but it's still not better than many other indexes that already exist. If we move along to the teaching here, I think that the teaching of this index, I think that it's pretty basic overall, and I think Javier did a good job, but I think that the biggest flaw of the teaching of this index is that you're gonna notice in all of these instructional videos that these guys start with their hand in their pocket during these routines. And that's the wrong way to use an index. You don't want to put your hand in your pocket and say, hey, name a card, because it just telegraphs what you're doing. And that's what these guys do in every single one of these routines. If you watch the live performances, they start with their hand in their pocket. The problem is it telegraphs what you're doing. So if, when you're going to go to your pocket, you have to have a reason. So if you tell a person to name a card, think of a card, name a card. You go to your pocket, you, you put both your hands in your pocket, you come out with a deck of cards makes sense why you went to your pockets. You come out with a Sharpie, it makes sense why you went to your pocket. But putting your hand in your pocket and saying, name a card, that doesn't look good at all. And so for that reason, I think that the teaching, they're teaching you some things that are not really, they're not good habits is what I would say. But otherwise, other than that, I thought though that the teaching that Javier did was pretty good. Now, when we get to the routines that are taught here, there are four primary routines that come with the decks that they teach you. They teach you an any card at any number routine, which is not original at all. It's been done many times. Um, they teach you a brainwave type uh, effect that you use the um, index, which again, not original. I've seen that done many times before. Like one example is like Patrick Redford put out um, that on his. Um, and they teach you an ambitious card routine using this, which that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, as long as they're not naming an ace, right? So some people may like that. And then finally, there's a torn corner routine that they go over, which is more like a prediction routine where you hand them a little something and it's the corner. They name a card and you take the card out of your back pocket and show them that, they, you know, you predicted that that was a card they were going to name and that the corner matches. It's almost like as if it's really like a, a convincer that it's the right card. The problem is that that corner doesn't identify to that specific card other than the tear. And so it would have been better if they had come up with a different version that the corner actually matches something, like maybe if there was like a signature or something that extends into the corner, but they didn't come up with that. There's actually 
other much better ideas utilizing a similar principle, but these guys didn't think about it. And I'm not gonna tell them here because I'm not, I'm not trying to give them any tips. But you know, hey, I might tell somebody one day. But those are the main DEX routines that are on here. And then there's a bunch of other routines that you're never gonna use because there are routines, like there's a routine that uses Craig Petty's ED seats that you're not gonna use that, why? Because ED seats is an inferior routine that you're not gonna use anyway. Um, and so that's a routine that no one's gonna use that. And they didn't do it in any of their live performances either. Then there's the Cognito routine with, with this. And of course, that wasn't in any of the live performances either. Um, Andrew Niner's routine, which is called Lucid, unless you have that transparent deck, you're not gonna be doing that either. So, you know, plus or minus. The utility items I think are valuable for people that just wanna learn about card magic in general, but many of those utility items have nothing to do with an index. And a lot of the ideas that they give you with the index are pretty basic ideas that probably everybody already knows about. I mean, utilizing, you know, the uh, Quiver wallet for prediction, that whole idea has been like, you know, it's been done so many times that everybody and their grandmother knows about it. But those are basically the routines that you're gonna learn on here. There's some live performances that Javier gives and you'll notice that the routines he uses are really the most basic routines and really it's because those routines are the workable routines that are there like the any card, any number and the brainwave type effect. So I think that those are good. Let's take a look at the rating of decks. So you can see here that I've rated this overall really low, 1.42 out of five. I wouldn't recommend that you buy this and it's for the following reasons. You can see the design of the index, I would rate as negative one out of five. The design is very poor. Um, it's not easy to use and it's not fast and you're not gonna be sure if you have the right card or not. Um, in terms of the quality of the product, negative one out of five. It's very cheaply made. Mine's already coming apart after just having it for a little over a week. So the quality is terrible. Um, it's not gonna last. And I'm actually gonna try to return mine. Um, the teaching I would rate as three and a half out of five. And the main reasons is because there's too much talking. They could have cut the, this down by a lot. Um, and the whole thing that they taught with starting with your hand in the pocket is terrible. That's a terrible idea. Um, compared to other indexes, I'd give this a two out of five because almost all other indexes are superior to this, including the cheetah that I went over about a year ago. Um, in terms of the routines, I would rate it as three out of five. I think that there's some routines on here that are very workable, but again, I don't see a whole lot of original thought. Like they haven't brought something amazing and new to the table in terms of routines with an index. In terms of price, I would just rate this as two out of five. I think it's overpriced for what you're getting, especially because it's so cheaply made. And that gives us a final rating, as you can see, of 1.42 out of five. I would not recommend that you buy this, and I would recommend you stay away from it and just get any other index that's out there or the Cheetah, which works great. Mine, I've had it now for like a year. It's holding up, it's working great, it's working perfectly, and it's a lot more reliable than this index. As usual, if you have any questions or comments about any of this stuff that I've gone over, please just leave me a comment below. Again, like I told you, um, everything I'm telling you here is from an objective standpoint. I really did have high hopes for this, but unfortunately, it was just a really big letdown, and I'm actually planning on returning mine, and I'm sure you're going to see everybody else trying to sell theirs to get rid of it. Anyway, thanks so much, guys, for tuning in to my reviews, and I will see you on the next one.